Today I'm going to talk about a maser, which is a microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quantum mechanical two-state system to describe the physics of the maser. Okay? And if you create a maser, you, you, you use ammonium molecules. And an ammonium molecule is essentially build up like such. There are three H's. And there's one nitrogen okay so there's hydrogen atoms and a nitrogen atom and the natural state of this ammonium molecule can be in essentially two states it can be in a somewhat of an up state right an up state depicted here with an arrow up if you look at the z-axis here but it can also be in a down state when the nitrogen is essentially below the plane of the ages here it's above and here it's below okay and it can flip naturally between those two stages in a very fast rate as, as we see in a little bit so in order to describe this we take a Hamiltonian that has a certain ground state energy E0 and it's in this case it's just decoupled right because it's diagonal and it has an up state and it has a down state, right? So you have a Hamiltonian with a down state with the same energy as the up state here. Okay. Now, if you look in nature, you will see that there are up and down states in nature. So there has to be some sort of mechanism to go from one state to the other state. And we model that by inserting a delta. And what that essentially means is that there is an ability to tunnel through the potential. If you look at the potential, a typical potential of the ammonia molecule over here, you see that there are essentially two valleys here where you can reside, right? And those are valleys that are depicting either this state or this state, right? So you are in an up state here and you are in a down state here. And the associated wave function, ground state wave function, is something like this. And there is an ability to go from this state to this state. How do you do that? By tunneling through this potential, of course. Okay, so you tunnel through, <clears throat> and then you can go from one state to the other state. And you see that here, okay? So the Hamiltonian here has the ability or has the model to actually go from one state to the other state. So if you look at this Hamiltonian, you can calculate the eigenvalues over here and the eigenvectors. Okay, so the eigenvalues are E0 plus delta and E0 minus delta. Okay, now the E0 minus delta has a ground state because this is the minimal energy of course so the ground state associated with this energy level is this and you can calculate this right you just calculate the eigenvectors of this Hamiltonian and you will see that you will get this okay this is then one eigenstate the ground state and of course you have an excited ground state which is essentially this ground this state over here and that's the first excited state that looks like that and that's what you see depicted here. And that has a higher energy level. It's E0 plus delta. So this is associated with E0 plus delta. This is associated with E0 minus delta. To give you an idea of that flipping back and forth of the ammonia molecule to being either in this state or in this state, the frequency associated with that is 23.87 gigahertz. So if you flip from an excited state to a ground state, you usually release a photon with this type of energy, H over nu, right? At this frequency with uh, the Planck constant. And that's the type of energy you will release if you go from up state to down state and back, okay? And of course, if you go from a lower state to a higher state, you have to inject an amount of energy in the size of this to make sure that you actually go to that other state. And that could happen if it's hit by a photon randomly, right? And that happens all the time. <clears throat> so to give you an idea of the time evolved state, we're going to insert these ground and excited states into the Schrodinger equation, right? And you uh, come to a, a solution which looks like this. You have your 
ground state energy here e to the power of minus i e minus delta times t over h bar times that ground state and here you have the excited state energy times the excited state and if you work that out based on the ground state and the excited state we defined before right or we calculated before these two if you fill those out in here you get cosines and sines so that gives you an idea on how it flips back and forth right so the probability of this system to find it in an upstate for instance that's over here is cosine squared delta times t divided by h bar so you can see that it flips between 0 and 1 right and that's the same for of course the downstate so now the idea is the following you have these ammonia molecules that could be either in the up or down state you don't know which state it is you would like to select out certain states right you would like to collect a whole lot of excited state ammonia molecules for instance right and you can do that by applying an electric field so the idea for maser is the following you have these random particles coming in at either ground state or excited state okay you see that over here they come into a system you have a gradient like electric field over here right that gives you the ability to sort out the ground state particles and the excited state particles so once you're done with this you have a whole bunch of ammonia molecules that are all in the excited state okay well almost all it's always a statistical game right but most of them you will find in an excited state you insert that into a next system so you have now all these excited state ammonia molecules you insert that into a system and this is a cavity that resonates exactly at the frequency in what we said before that 23.8 gigahertz so you take these excited uh, particles in there and you make sure that they leave at the ground state how that happens we will see later but you make sure that they leave at the ground state and if they do that of course they lost energy in in a photon and that energy is converted into a photon so you get a lot of photons in this cavity resonator that are being released from the ammonia molecules right so you have this excited state you go to the ground state when you go to the ground state you release a photon all these photons are collected and resonated with each other and that's how you get a maser or that's how you get a laser right and it is done in a stimulated way the way that's done in a stimulated way is as follows if you have an if you have the first molecule come in for instance right in an excited state it will go to the ground state and it will leave and it leaves a, an electromagnetic wave right of exactly the 23.8 gig, gigahertz now that photon is bouncing around the next molecule comes in that photon hits that next molecule and as a consequence it's more likely for that next molecule that comes in to go from the excited to the ground state etc 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 so the more molecules come in and have been converted the easier it is for the ones that come next to get into that excited state or to get into that ground state from that excited state and that's the stimulated part so that's the stimulated emission part of the maser how do we do that right so the first step going back to this picture the first step is to have a gradient electric field on the Hamiltonian or on the incoming uh, ammonia particles and that can be translated into the Hamiltonian that we had before so we had the Hamiltonian here without the mu e's right now we assign or we're gonna apply an electric field and you get this Hamiltonian as a consequence now you can calculate this Hamiltonian you can easily calculate the uh, new energy levels right of the excited state here and of the ground state here that's just you have a matrix and you can easily calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that's what we do here right if you do that you get the excited states and the ground new ground state okay if mu epsilon or th this E field is much smaller than Delta you can write it as such right so you get rid of the square root and you write it in a form like this <clears throat> now we have these uh, new eigenvalues we would like to see what happens to the Hamiltonian 
if we use these eigenvalues instead of the ups downs. I give you two examples here on how to do that. You take your Hamiltonian over here and you essentially project it against these states, right? And then you get the elements of the new Hamiltonian. If you do that and write it out over here, you essentially get your E0 plus delta as an element, and that's the EE element. So the EE element has to be E0 plus delta. You see that over here, okay? I did one other example, the EG, and if you calculate that, you get mu E, and that's the element you see here. And that's the same as the element over here, okay? And then the last one you can calculate in a similar fashion. So if you do that, you get a new Hamiltonian over here that looks like this. That's now, uh, that now has the basis excited and ground state bases, right? With this typical Hamiltonian. So this Hamiltonian has an E0 and you can take that out. That's just a constant and it really doesn't matter for the calculation. So the Hamiltonian we are going to work with and calculate with is this Hamiltonian over here. Okay. And you can see that an electric field here essentially separates out the uh, ground from the excited state here. You can see that, right? We started with E0 with a the Hamiltonian. Then we said, okay, we need tunneling capability. So you have E0 plus delta and E0 minus delta in the model. So that's over here. And now you're gonna apply that electric field and you see that you get more separation, okay? So the ground state, once the electric field becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, the ground state difference between the ground state and the excited state becomes also bigger, as you can see there, okay? So now let's take a look at the Schrodinger equation with our new Hamiltonian. So we came up with our new Hamiltonian over here. We're going to fill that out into the Schrodinger equation and we're going to try to solve it. Now this is very hard to solve, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that there is no electric field and we're going to solve it like that. If you do that, you see it's totally decoupled, right? And then you can easily solve it. It's just an e power. Nothing hard. This one I'm going to fill back into here, in this equation. And if I do that, I get this equation over here. Okay? That's what we will get. And you have an electric field here. Yeah? The ET here is E0 cosine omega 0t. That's the electric field that we uh, we applied. So if you take this equation now and write it out, you get two equations here. Yeah, you get one in the excited state and you get one in the ground state. Now this is really hard to solve, right? You cannot really solve this easily. And this one you cannot solve easily either. But once you realize that this frequency here, this resonates at a frequency that is so much higher than the changes of BG and BE over the beta G and beta E over the same time frame that you can take this out. It averages out to zero anyway so you can take this out and you don't have to look at that in order to solve your differential equation. And that's because the time scale is so different from this oscillation versus this. So this is not changing at all if this goes up and down once this doesn't change at all, it's essentially constant, so you can take it out. If you do that, you get very simple differential equations over here that you can solve, right? It's just two simple differential equations over here. There's a, an excited state here, there's a ground state here. You differentiate this, for instance, one more time. You get a derivative here, and then, then you fill this one out in here, and that's what we did here, and you can solve this, right? So you get an excited uh, beta with this solution, and you get an excited ground state with this solution, okay? And this is where we need to be. So we essentially, if we fill this back into here, we have essentially an expression for CE, okay? For the excited state. And if you quadratize that, you get a probability of an ammonium molecule being in an excited state, okay? And that's depicted with a cosine squared over here. So this is what we need. If you look at this, at t is zero, the probability of being in an excited state is essentially one. And that's when you enter the system at t is zero, okay? And now you want to make sure that at 
sometime if you leave here depending on the speed the incoming speed of the ammonium molecules and depending on the form factor of this cavity this is cavity this is a resonator right this re resonator cavity depending on those properties we need to make certain that once we leave here the probability of being in the excited state is zero right because if you are it's a two-state system if you are in an excited state with a probability of zero here you have to be in a ground state <clears throat> there's no other way right so then you leave at a ground state when you enter at an excited state how do you do that well if you look at the probability here you just need to make sure that this is pi over 2 for instance right if you are at this point you better make sure that this is pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 or 5 pi over 2 right and that's based on form factor and incoming speed right form factor of this device here what the length is and what the speed of the incoming ammonia molecules are okay so if you make sure that you hit the pi over 2 here you make sure that you go from an excited to a ground state and if you have that photons will be released from every ammonia molecule that comes in a photon will be released you get an electromagnetic wave right you get stimulation as what was explained earlier because this electromagnetic wave all these photons that are already here will hit the incoming ammonia molecule and the probability of that one because of all these hits going from the excited state to the ground state is much higher and therefore you get your stimulated emission and therefore you get a maser and or a laser right so you get essentially an electromagnetic wave here that is first of all at the same frequency but also at the same phase and that's why you get a very strong coherent signal right where you can do all kinds of interesting things with okay i think this is a great place to stop i hope i was clear in my explanation if you have questions please let me know in the comments you know and i can answer them and we can go in more detail if need be so I think good place to stop. If you like this video, please subscribe and please like, and I'll see you in the next one.